It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Stay tuned for the rest of that footage later on in the video, guys. Guys, what is up? Welcome back to I'm So Craigie. We're kicking off where I left it on part one. If you haven't seen part one yet, click the top right corner of your screen now or click the link in the video description to head on over to watch it. Otherwise, let's get into it. We're in Pembrokeshire now, guys, and I've just left Wise Man's Bridge heading south to Saundersfoot. Saundersfoot is just a five minute drive south of Wise Man's Bridge. It's a large coastal village and holiday destination. It has the main beach next to the harbour. This beach is where the Saundersfoot New Year's Day swim takes place every year. And sometimes as many as 1500 people participate in this. I'm keen to do it next year myself so anyone who's keen hit me up. The harbour next to the beach is where you'll find parking as well as the beachside parking too, both of which are pretty pricey and will cost you £10 for 8 hours if you're staying all day. As mentioned in my previous video, Wise Man's Bridge has free parking and is only about a 20 to 30 minute walk away. The walk, named the Dramway, starts or ends at the beachside parking in Saundersfoot and runs along the seafront through three tunnels to Wise Man's Bridge Beach. It's a really nice walk and worth doing anyway, so I recommend parking at Wise Man's Bridge for free and walking to Saundersfoot. Spaces are limited at Wise Man's Bridge, so get there early. Other things you'll find at Saundersfoot are your typical seaside town stuff, like souvenir shops, ice cream shops, fish and chip shops, and of course, bars and restaurants. Just an 8 minute drive further south along the coast is Tenby, one of my favourite places in Wales. Tenby is where it's all going on. It has two and a half miles of sandy beaches to enjoy. It's a thriving little seaside town with an awesome holiday vibe and it's accessible by train. There's a nice place to park your van right next to the stairs that access Tenby North Beach but the spaces fill up fast so get there early. It's roadside parking, not a car park so it's not ideal but it's a rare place to park up for free in Tenby so take advantage of it. As always, the coordinates are in the video description. If you do stop at Tenby, and you definitely should, take a walk around town and check it out. And make sure you get a pie from Pembrokeshire Pasty and Pie Co. Honestly, this place was so damn good that I even queued up a second time to stock up on pies for later that day. It's worth driving to Tenby just for those pies. And this is not even a sponsorship message either. I left Tenby after a swim and a few hours wandering about and followed the A4139 around the coast looking for a decent place to park up for the night. I accidentally came across Manabia Beach and decided to camp there. There's free parking next to the beach but only the bottom two or three spaces are flat enough to camp on, the rest are on a hill. Luckily for me I got the very bottom spot which is the flattest. About a two minute walk from the beach is more parking but it's pay and display. This car park is just across the road from Manabia Castle and has a toilet block which seems to be open 24 hours, at least in the summer it is anyway. When living on the road, one bit of kit you should all be carrying with you is one of these. Just plug it into the fag lighter and then pump your tyres up. Do a cup of a flat tyre, pump it up, get it sorted. This has saved my ass on almost a daily basis because this tyre's got a nail in it but I refuse to get the tyre changed because the tread's pretty good so I'm going to see what I can get out of it. It's not so bad right now but it normally goes down in about 3 or 4 days so that's when I'm using this thing. The problem with this is it makes a god awful noise. So it's better to make sure no one's around. You don't want to be disrespectful to people when you're using it. Listen to this. Respect Brexit, get Brexit done, and I commend this. God, ain't that awful? Nobody wants to hear that shit. Tonight, we are leaving the European Union. For many people, this is an astonishing moment of hope. A moment they thought would never come. And there are many. At one of the beaches I was staying at the other night, there was, I'm guessing they were German, there was a family next to us, and when they'd left, I found this little thing on the floor. I'll show you now. Nicht schlafen. Is it schlafen? Schlafen. Nicht schlafen. No sleeping. It got a little wet. It was actually really good. It was like really, really well made. 
but there's Nish slapping in my van. So that only means one thing. I'm gonna have to stay up all night and drink beer because the sign is clear. No sleeping, right? I'm not gonna break the rules, so. And that was, <laughs> that was a, well, an eight-year-old German girl has now forced me to stay up and drink beer. For God's sake, I don't even wanna do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm way ahead of you, little girl. Cheers. This part of Wales is great, guys, because it has so many things and places so close together, which explains why it's such a popular holiday destination. The place is littered with campsites and beaches. It has Manor Wildlife Park, just a seven minute drive west of Tenby, and Folly Farm, a 13 minute drive north. The latter being great because you can drop the kids off there and drive nine more minutes north to Oakwood Theme Park for the day. Look at this, man. That water is bloody freezing at eight o'clock in the morning. We're on the way now, most are refreshed. Right now, I'm in Manabia Beach in South Wales, not far from Pembroke, not far from Tenby, somewhere in between. It's like half eight in the morning, this place is beautiful. But unlucky for you guys, I'm not naked today. There are kids knocking about and people doing their morning swim. I don't know if this is common knowledge because I only learned this recently. I don't really ever read the sign on the pay display meters back there. But um, if you just go up to it, if you want to do something quick, for example, now I want to use a toilet block to brush my teeth, but no one might look. The warden will come while I'm in there and I get a ticket. But it, so if you want to do something like that, or maybe even just pop to the shop, just walk on up, press the green button, and they usually give you about 15 minutes or 20 minutes for free. The time now is what, 9.25. There you go, I've got half an hour. According to Wikipedia, Wales is sometimes called the castle capital of the world, although I've been Welsh for over 31 years now and I've never heard it be called that. But Wikipedia never lies, apparently. It's a little known fact that Wales has more castles per square mile than any other country in Europe and at one point there were over 600 castles here. The castles of Wales were built between the 11th and 19th century with the oldest being Chepstow Castle which was built in 1067. That's right, Chepstow Castle was the first castle ever built in Wales. Caerphilly Castle is the largest castle in Wales and second largest in the UK after Windsor Castle. The reason we have so many castles is because it took the Normans over 200 years to fully conquer Wales because we're as f so lots of castles were built in defence. It was the English speaking Normans who brought the English language to Wales, which is why we primarily speak English in Wales today. Guys, Wales is full of interest in history, so if that's your thing, you'll love it here. I want to say guys, if you're still watching the video at this point, please hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm shares the video with more people. And if you like my content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. Guys, I am in St. David's, a city located in southwest Wales. It is named after the patron saint of Wales and is also where he was laid to rest. Guys, this is the smallest city in the UK with a population of just 1,600 people. It is tiny. Behind me is St. David's Cathedral. I'm not massively into cathedrals, guys, but this one's a beauty.
After leaving St David's, I started heading northwards up the west coast of Wales. I was looking for a place called the Blue Lagoon. While here, I met up with one of my subscribers and fellow van lifer, Lisa, and her sister, Sheena, and we camped together for a couple of nights. We headed for Aberythi Beach, which you might recognise from the intro to part one. This beach is where the short five minute walk to the Blue Lagoon starts. The beachside parking costs four pound for the entire day and is strictly no camping. So strict that we didn't camp there and neither did two other vans. The Blue Lagoon is an old slate quarry that has been flooded by the sea. It's 25 metres deep and popular for tombstoning. Everybody else was jumping in with wetsuits and a helmet, but that's not how I roll. The lowest two jumping platforms are about 5 metres and 6 metres high. The highest platform is 10 metres high. For reference, that's the height of a three-storey house. I'm not 100% sure, but I'd say it's the highest thing I've jumped off. Even higher than that frame I jumped off into the Pearl River in Guangzhou, China. Funny story that, once I got helped out of the river, I went straight back into the the club with my mate still dripping wet. Guys, make sure if you are going to jump into the Blue Lagoon to ask one of the jumpers that are already there or one of the instructors knocking about where it's safe to jump. There are rocks in some places under the water. We had to wait for half an hour before getting let into the Blue Lagoon for a lady who had injured her back who was getting evacuated by helicopter. We left Aberythi Beach and drove about 50 minutes north to Newport Beach. We passed through Goodwick and Fishguard on the way. Fishguard is one of the places where you can get a ferry to Ireland from South Wales. The other place being Pembroke, both ports sail to Rosslare. At Newport Beach there is a pay and display car park that you can park in, but you will get a parking ticket for camping there. Optionally, you can just drive straight onto the beach and park up there for free. The sand is firm enough to drive on without getting stuck. When we camped there, there were probably about 8 to 10 other vans camping there that night, one of them being a full-blown motorhome. I decided to sleep in my tent that night to mix it up a little bit. The next day I said bye to Lisa and Sheena and drove up the west coast heading to North Wales. But that's for another video guys. Guys thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Click that video on the left if you want to watch me picking up hitchhikers in Andorra or click that video on the right for my most recent upload. Hit that subscribe button for more guys and I'll see you on the next one.